Well, we go back to the story about what is happening in Mozambique. We're now joined on the line from London by Elizabeth Azevedo Harman from Chatham House, the Royal Institute of International Affairs. Thank you very much, Elizabeth, for, for joining us. And uh, things seem like to be escalating every other week in, in, in Mozambique at the moment. How bad is the situation on the ground, particularly in the center of that country where we understand there have been sporadic attacks by armed men who are allegedly members of RENAMO? Uh, good morning. Um, we've been following very closely the situation, and as you said, the, the central region now, and also a little bit more in the north, that uh, just had an incident recently that is the region of Nampula, but it's, it's a growing uh, tension, and uh, the, the, the variable that is more concerned is the uncertainty. There is no defined area where the violence can happen and no time control also. So it's very unpredictable at when and what what's going to happen. So it's, it's, if uh, it's not advisable at all for people to travel to these two regions in, in Mozambique, even for Mozambicans themselves, uh, one of the national roads uh, just with military convoy uh, has been allowed to be used because there have been several attacks in these roads. But also the other area, Fala, uh, especially in Sofala, close to Grongosa, and uh, in Ampula, it's, it's unpredictable if any episode of violence. And this violence can happen from both sides, I should say this. It can it should be can be as we've been seen by allegedly uh, Renamo men. But it's been all also operations from the army of from the government that have not been announced to the population. So these these operations also scare the population and also create instability in the region. Now, Elizabeth, what has gone wrong here? Mozambique has been fairly at peace uh, with itself since the 1992 peace accord was reached between Frelimo and Renamo, and until recently things were fine. What has happened to make Renamo uh, lead Afonso Takama to go back to the bush, so to speak? There are several reasons. Um, one of the reasons is related to Renamo himself. Uh, the party uh, leadership has been the same since 1979, uh, they did uh, the civil war and they did also the peace agreement and we, we should uh, don't forget that they're both part of the also they were important for the peace to be achieved in the country but in terms of multi-party democracy and ballot box it's been very difficult for the party to get used to the new game and they've been losing electoral support the party leader uh, Afonso Jacama is is been uh, every time in every time that he runs for presidential election losing support. So there's also this uh, this feeling from Renamo that is losing stage, and this is the stage that uh, Afonso Jacama and uh, and Renamo knows very well. It, and so they they were in, in terms that are losing in all the other fronts. They went to back to to the part that they are actually very comfortable. Saying this, th there is also the other side of the of the coin. Hanam has been pointing that uh, Frelimo has control not just of the political power, but also of the economic power. So they've been saying that they've been discriminated in terms of access to the resources of the country, that the Frelimo, uh, some of the, the Frelimo leaders have been taking advantage of, of the, the economic growth in the country. So there's also this sense of it, that they're not being inclusive. Uh, process in the in the country, yeah. and some of the population does agree with this. So there is this sense that the peace consolidation did did fail in this sense of inclusiveness of of both parts. Now, Elizabeth, uh, if we look at what's happening now, and we know about the past of Renamo, Renamo used to get a lot of military support from the old apartheid government in South Africa. Today, do you think they have both the resources and the capacity to sustain a war against the Mozambican government? No, I don't think so. I think they, the, for a civil war, I've been repeatedly saying that, uh, and I know I've, I've been uh, you know, talking with a lot of Hanamu people, and I visit these provinces quite often. I don't really think that they have capacity for a civil war, as, and as you said very correctly, there is no regional support. There is no more the white South Africa that used to support Hanamu or other, even other international forces. So I don't think they have any international support. Saying this, they can continue to do what they, they've been doing, and they can actually increase these kind of operations. For this low-intensity war, a guerrilla war, you don't really need uh, the, the resources and the equipment for a civil war. You can continue to do for a while and for a long period 
to do like episodes of small violence with three, four, five, six men that can scare the population, can scare the business, and can create really strong instability. And even that the Mozambican army can ally uh, with the Zimbabwean army and the other army, and we have uh, many examples in history where powerful armies uh, struggle to, to fight a little guerrilla that sits in the, in the bush here or in the bush there. So it, it can create, and as, the, as we've been seeing in the last year, instability in the country. Now, you just mentioned Zimbabwe there. Of course, we've got the oil pipeline from Beira that goes into Zimbabwe. We've got railways that run from the coast uh, to South Africa and, and, and to Zimbabwe. Do you think we could see a regional military intervention? I mean, we just reported now that the SADC leaders who are meeting in Pretoria since last night uh, to discuss the war in the DRC have condemned the actions by Renamo and have appealed for an end to hostilities. No, I don't think so. I don't think that even that this problem is still not solved and we don't see any solution for now because it seems there's lack of, of will for real dialogue. They have they've had some negotiations, but they're never really serious negotiations among the two parties. Um, still, I don't think there is any uh, scenario will to have any intervention from, from any other country, even from from Mozambican government. I don't, I don't see why the Mozambican government will improve with, uh, with any uh, help of any foreign forces. It will actually make them weaker in, in the eyes of the population. Uh, so first, in terms of resources and military intervention, I don't see that they need it at this stage. And second, they do need to, to be careful how to lead and how to, to present themselves to the public opinion, the Mozambican public opinion. And if that happens, it can be perceived quite wrongly by the by the, the public opinion. Thank you very much. That's we're going to have to leave it. That's Elizabeth Azevedo Harman from Chatham House, the Royal Institute of International Affairs on the situation in Mozambique. News that moves. ENCA.com.